Stephen Piscotti back with the ball club. The celebration of life for his mother Gretchen that took place yesterday in the East Bay. I can imagine the heavy heart that he's got right now and probably the rest of his career and life he's got to have a heavy heart for his mom. Mom had a great sense of humor. She was talking only recently about her boys, the Piscotti boys, playing naked wiffle ball in the backyard growing up. That's what it takes to get you to the show. <laughs> And now the 0-2 pitch, and Steven a drive to left, headed for the monster, and over the monster, and gone. And Piscotti has given the A's a 3-0 lead. A tremendous shot over the green monster in left field, and 3-0 A's in the second. So his first at bat after the service for his beloved mother, and he blasts a home run here at Fenway Park. Wow. And to the Piscotti family in Pleasanton, if you're standing and cheering or maybe a little tear, we know why. As he touches his heart, as he said, and looked up to the skies, and congratulations to Stephen Piscotti. Well, home run number three for Piscotti. We may have a little, a little more emphasis than the other ones. You can imagine the emotion for Piscotti as he crossed the plate. He did tap his chest in honor of his mom. And NBC Sports California followed Steven out of the dugout, and it was just great to see a, a smile for him and a smile from the teammates as well. Michael Lorenzen back from the bereavement list. Now, it's been kind of hush-hush as to the reason that he was away from the team, but Michael approached me before the game and wanted me to share this story. Earlier this week, he lost his father. His father passed away. And right now, the song that's playing is he changed his pitching song to Who Are You by The Who in honor of his dad. His dad was an absolute fanatic about the band The Who. Lorenzen with a shot to right field. Carrying well. Home run. Michael Lorenzen. First pitch he sees here in the bottom of the seventh. And it is nine to one Reds. First career home run for Lorenzen. Boy, a very emotional trip around the bases for Michael Lorenzen. Nice curveball. Throws hard. And a nice big hand for Wilmer Flores as he comes to bat. Most of these fans know that Wilmer's about to get traded. And social media being such these days, everybody knows what the situation is. It's a little odd that Wilmer's still in the game. But the fans giving him a nice send off here. Brown to him right at the shortstop, Amarista. And Flores retired two out. Want to get traded. The first trade is always the most difficult. That had to be a very difficult at bat for him. Well, he's been in this organization since he was 16 years old. But it's got to be strange for the other guys in the dugout, too, right? You've got a player who's been in your organization for for seven years, who uh, who you valued, who you are trading clearly to bring back an important asset. Um, and the fact that he's out there and risking injury at a time when you're trying to consummate the trade is strange in in itself. But for him to be that emotional and out on the field just strikes me as as odd. Well. This is a business part of the game Gary and it can be heartless and. Uh, unsympathetic. Uh, I am not one to. You know, give provide a towel to cry on one's shoulder, but I feel for Wilmer. I know exactly what he's going through. Well, this was after Wilmer Flores came off the field in the top of the inning. Terry Collins went over to him, and he had a uh, a rather lengthy heart to heart with Wilmer. And I don't know exactly what's being communicated here, but clearly Terry is concerned about what has happened here tonight with Flores having spent the last four or five innings in limbo. With the world believing that he's been traded to Milwaukee, but the deal not yet consummated, it's led to tears for Wilmer Flores. And once the conversation was over, he uh, he took his equipment, headed down the tunnel, and it looks as though he is uh, not going to take an at bat if his turn comes up here in the ninth. Oh, one to Womack, and he lets one into right field. 
Cody B. Cody B. It is a grand slam for Tony Wilder. If there is one player of all the players to hit a grand slam on this Father's Day, and you see Tony Womack, very emotional, tears in his eyes. He lost his father a little more than three weeks ago. He's crying. Yep. Wow. Action now for the Oakland A's, and it is Pat Nishak is up. An amazing story that he is. Even here at the moment and on this roster for the Oakland A's. And part of the great team that the Oakland A's are. Certainly happy to have him back. The loss of his son just 23 hours after the birth of his son. This is down the left field line that'll hook foul. And Buck Martinez, I don't know how you bounce back from something like that, but he and his wife have very quickly. They're here. He's on the postseason roster. And this is where he wants to be back in the baseball field. But for him, thoughts and prayers are certainly with his family. And the number is for Pat Nishak. As he comes into this game, first out of the pen for the A's. Verlander, while wow. he had a chance to get out of the inning. Jackson strikes out. That'll end the inning. We played seven. Tigers on top, 3 1. And looks to the sky and taps the patch. Teammate Johnny Gomes, first one to come over. Nobody can imagine what is going through his mind right now, but obviously a very emotional point in his life. David Ortiz out on the field being mobbed by photographers waving his cap to the crowd he's around the first baseline now and there are maybe 30 camera people out there with him David looking around at the entire audience here I would say maybe 25,000 fans have stayed for this at least and uh this is something you just don't ever see a person getting this kind of attention David now standing on the pitching rubber he's doffing his cap to the crowd now as David had just climbed up on top of the pitching mound and the host of cameras around him in a circle I don't believe he has a microphone he pats his hand on his heart pats his heart with his hand and Waving to the crowd, turning around completely, We're now waving to the fans in the bleachers. Looking out toward right field where he hit so many home runs. Now looking to the people behind home plate and down the third base line. Looks like he's fighting back tears, Joe. He's very somber, of course, very disappointed at the result with the Red Sox being swept, losing. A one run game for the second time in this three game series. I've never seen anything like this at the end of a career. As he has came in from left field, replaced by Chico Walker, Ted Williams, replaced by Carol Hardy. And David Ortiz left the game for a pinch runner. We hope that wasn't the end. That was the tying run, but. David now walks off the pitching rubber and is heading toward the dugout. Going across the foul line. He's being mobbed by media here. An amazing scene at Fenway. David again takes off his cap, waves to the crowd behind the Red Sox dugout. Stops. Now down the dugout steps toward the clubhouse. Yeah, like JD said, um, <clears throat> let me just uh, you know call this today. God damn it. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
the uh, doctors told me since, um, you know, uh, two spinal fusions, um, you know, I got to, you know, can't play Major League Baseball anymore. Um, so I just want to, um, <clears throat> I just want to thank my team, my teammates, uh, um, you know, all the coaching staff, um, you know, I'm really miss, yeah, really miss being around those guys, cause, uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of fun, and I just been in the big league clubhouse since I was, uh, you know, their age, so, it's, uh, you know, to not be able to play is gonna be tough, so, uh, but, um, you know, like I said, I'm just happy I got to, you know, you know, my, happy I got to enjoy my career uh, so far and um, play with these guys. How's this for drama?
He's got an interesting way to grip the bat when he is at the plate. His top hand actually overlays over his bottom hand. I think Ramon is hurt. Yeah, he sure is. You can see him throw his glove in disgust, but he threw that last pitch, and boy, oh boy, this is a tough scene here. He knows something is seriously wrong, and now the assistant trainer Mike Prostead is out. He's out oh. in his elbow. Yeah, that's. You never like to see that. And judging from his reaction, he knows exactly what happened. He knew immediately as he threw the pitch and then walked off the mound and slammed his glove to the field. And we had talked about how much he enjoys the game, and you just get a sense that he recognized that that might be his yeah. last pitch. Yeah. That he did something serious to his elbow. So Ramon Ortiz will lead the ball game with an apparent elbow injury. Another tough injury for the Blue Jays, and certainly a tough one for Ramon Ortiz. Gordon has started to look like the D Gordon. Of last year. Gordon to right. It's deep. And it's gone. D. Gordon has hit it out. And the Marlins have a one nothing lead. out for the ceremonial first pitch today your Donald Ventura's mother Marisol flanked by Ned Yost and Dave Moore and Salvador Perez who was with your your Donald Ventura every step of the way here in the big leagues is the most appropriate person to receive this first pitch first with her finger drawing in the word Dios on the dirt of the mound and a standing ovation from the crowd. You can imagine how hard this has been for her. You talk about how hard it's been for us to deal with the emotions coming in waves and for Marisol having to relive it all today. But it was a great celebration, a great way to honor his life. Wearing Giordano's jersey in number 30.
Marisol Hernandez with Raul Hernandez. And it's another stage in the healing today. Away the 0 2, a bouncer Ruiz in time. Roy Holiday 